The word porcupine means thorn pig. The English word for porcupines can be traced back about 600 years, when the animal was known as pork despine. That came from the old French pork espin, which literally translates to spine hog, from the Latin roots porcus pig, and spina, thorn or spine. There were also several other variations of the word in Middle English and Early Modern English. In Hamlet, for example, Shakespeare wrote it as porpentine. There are two distinct families of porcupines. Porcupines are not pigs, of course. They're just big rodents whose stout bodies and blunt, rounded heads look vaguely pig-like. They fall into two main families, Old World Porcupines, Histricidae, of Africa and Eurasia and New World Porcupines, Erythosontidae, of North and South America. Old World Porcupines are terrestrial and strictly nocturnal, and have longer quills. They include the large crested porcupines, some of which can grow more than 2 feet, 61 centimeters, long and weigh up to 60 pounds, 27 kilograms. They have a skirt of long, pliable quills that can measure 20 inches, 51 centimeters, long, which can stand up in tense situations, making the porcupines appear two or three times larger. New World porcupines are less strictly nocturnal. Some are terrestrial, while others live entirely in trees, with long, prehensile tails to help them balance. Their quills are shorter, and aren't grouped in clusters like those of their Old World counterparts. They tend to be smaller, although the North American porcupine can be 3 feet, 90 centimeters, long and weigh 30 pounds, 14 kilograms. The good swimmers both the Old World and New World families of porcupines are surprisingly skillful swimmers. In at least some porcupine species, the air-filled quills on the animal's backs can give them a buoyancy boost as they move through water, like a permanent life jacket. While the quills help it stay afloat, the porcupine propels itself forward with a stroke similar to dog paddling. Some porcupines have as many as 30,000 quills. These modified hairs are loosely connected, letting them detach easily so the porcupine can escape while its attacker deals with the consequences. Contrary to a long-standing myth, porcupines cannot eject their quills like arrows rather it can detach its quills only when touched. Still, porcupine quills are not just passive weapons. Aside from wearing them like armor, a porcupine may charge at a predator if it feels threatened, even swinging its quill-covered tail. The end of each quill has a barb like a fish hook, making it difficult to remove. Porcupine quills are coated with potent natural antibiotics, which have been shown to strongly inhibit the growth of several gram-positive bacterial strains. That might seem odd, as if porcupines are protecting their predators from infection, but their quills are most likely medicated for their own safety. Porcupines can accidentally stab themselves in a variety of situations, such as falling out of trees, which research suggests may happen fairly often, and having antibiotic-coated quills could limit the damage. Baby porcupines are known as porcupets. They are born with soft, bendable quills that begin to harden within a few days after they are born. Porcupine mothers typically have only one baby at a time, but their offspring tend to grow up quickly. In some species, a porcupet may be ready to live independently just a few months after being born. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to get more interesting clips like this.